In this Unreal tutorial, I wanna show you how to add sequencer camera animation to your gameplay camera. So I'm gonna be using the Real Camera Motion library, which you can find at the link in the description, or the Unreal Marketplace, if you just Google or search that in the Unreal Marketplace. But this could be applied with any kind of sequencer camera animation. So you could hand key a camera, however you want to get that animation um, on a camera in sequencer works. Again, I'm gonna be using the library that you can find that I've put together to easily kind of apply these animations to your cinematics or gameplay. Um, but I wanna show you how uh, you can add those sequencer camera animations to your gameplay camera. All right, so let's get started. So to get to this point, all I did was just use the first person shooter template. And so to get the uh, camera motion library, we just need to add that from the marketplace library that we have here. So I'm gonna hop over there, go down to where I have the real camera motion library. I'm gonna add that to my current project and it's going to install that. So back over in my project, I can see now that I have the camera library folder, I'll have access to all those uh, animations. So the first thing we wanna do is create a blueprint for this animation. So I'm gonna go into my first person blueprints and create a new blueprint class. I'm just going to search for shake and we want a sequence camera shake. So I'm gonna click that and say, all right. And I'll say my camera sequence shake. And if we double click that, it's pretty simple uh, little details here. We just need to pick our sequence, but because I've loaded in the real camera motion library, I have access to all of those assets here. So all I need to do is, because it's a first person shooter, this example is going to use uh, the gun firing animation. I'm gonna choose the rotate only, and without the underscore S, that means that's the raw um, animation. So I'm gonna leave everything else as default. We'll probably have to change the blend in time. Um, but just to show you quickly how this works, I'll hit compile. And then uh, what we need to do is add this to the first person uh, blueprint. Uh, so we go to first person character, double click that. And then we can see that this section here is spawning the projectile. So we can kind of add this camera shake at the end of that sequence here. So all I need to do is just drag this out, let go, and then search for shake play world camera shake. And then all we have to do is select the class that we've made. So it sees the my camera sequence shake, which is what I named earlier. And then we just need to get the position, which you can get from the get actor location here. So I'll just click and drag that into the epicenter. And then we want to make sure that this captures the camera itself. So I just need to increase the outer radius a little bit. So I'll type in 500 and that's pretty much it. I just need to hit compile. And then when we hit play, I'll show you that we, there's still a few steps we need to do, but essentially that's that. those are the steps right there. So when I hit play and go in here, start firing, it will start playing the animation, but because the camera library has so many variations in one sequence, it's gonna play all of them. <laughs> and so we don't want that. So we'll have a little more work um, to do. To We'll need to pick one of these and adjust for it. But essentially that's how you do it. That's the whole tutorial. But let me continue uh, to show you how to, if you do have the real camera motion library, to show you how to adjust this so you can uh, just pick one of these gun reactions and focus on that so that only one of them play instead of the whole sequence. Um, all right, so I'm gonna escape out of this. I'm gonna go back to the uh, camera library and I'm gonna go find, I want the raw, so I'm just gonna search in here and I'm gonna type in gun and we want the gunfire two is more of a pistol firing. Um, the gunfire is more of a machine gun. So um, I want to make a duplicate of this because I don't wanna be editing the original in my project. I wanna, any work or destructive work I do, I wanna do on a duplicate. So I'm gonna just duplicate that gunfire two animation. So I'll just remember that's, you know, gunfire two R1 is the one we're gonna be working on. So if I double click that, um, I get the entire sequence here. And it's a little bit easier to see where the animation occurs if we open up the uh, curve editor. So I'll just click that and you can see, you know, on these rotations where each 
instance of a gunfire is happening. And so we just need to scrub through this and pick the one that we want to use. Now, keep in mind, you know, even though, you know, the, the intent of this library is to give a lot of variation and choices, uh, we just need to choose one because this is for gameplay. So we only want one to play back. And even though this variation includes different amplitudes, you can see there's different heights to these curves. So that means more intensity or not. Um, we still have some control over that using the weight and play scale and stuff like that, even after the fact. So you're not even constrained by the limits of these curves. You can increase the intensity after the fact. So keep that in mind when you're choosing one. Um, so we could choose the, the biggest one, but we could still, even after the fact, make that even bigger just by changing one number uh, later on, I'll show you. So let's, cho let's choose the biggest one. And what the, the kind of catch uh, moment here is I'm just using Alt and Shift and right click to scale this up to see it better. Um, the the kind of catchy moment here is that it wants to uh, play back from zero. So we just need to move everything down to zero from this point. So I can see right here, it says frame 299. So I just need to remember that uh, and, and delete everything up to that frame. So I'm gonna uh, control middle mouse wheel uh, to zoom in and then just delete everything kind of leading up to that. And just for safety, maybe I'll do one more frame before that. Because we are gonna have a blend in, but because it's a gun firing animation, you want that to happen pretty quickly. So we might just adjust the blend as well um, once we get this settled. So it will take the end position. So we just need to kind of get to a point where this kind of ends nicely. And uh, we can either right click and say set end time, or you can do it over here and type it in as well. So that is that, and we need to save it. And you can see the thumbnail updates here as well. So then we can go back into the blueprint that we made and choose that instead. So um, we just need to go back one more level in the folder to the My Camera Sequence Shake, double click that. And earlier when we chose this one, we just need to choose the new one now. So Gunfire 2 R1 is the one we just made. And here's the play rate and scale. So essentially play rate is how fast to play the animation and scale is more about the intensity. So it, it would like scale the curves essentially. So these are the two places where, you know, if a gunfire or whatever, you know, the car driving animations, whatever it is, you can increase or decrease the intensity here really quickly without having to go in and edit the actual curves of the animation. So like I said, because this is a gunfire animation, we probably wanna reduce the blend time in. So I'm just gonna put 0.1 there and I'll leave 0.4. You know, this is a pretty short, we have 38 frames. So, you know, 30 frames is one second. So that's a half a second we're blending out. Um, that might be too much of a blend out, but anyway, we can just leave it and change it later if we want. I just need to make sure I hit compile so that all, that, all those changes go through. All right, so now, when we go back to the uh, to play, um, everything should work as expected. So now we have that that single gunfire animation play immediately, and so that's how you take the real camera motion library, adjust it to how you want to choose from all the variation it gives you. Um, and then just pick one for uh, gameplay. So that's how you can use the camera sequencer to you know, adjust and add stuff to your gameplay camera. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, again, you probably already have the Real Camera Motion Library if you're watching this possibly. If not, you can find it in the Unreal Marketplace. Or if you also want the entire library, which includes maya.atom files, um, which means you can immediately import them on their own layer so they can work additively in Maya. Um, it also has the FBXs that are oriented for Blender. Um, uh, so the whole package um, that is like 1,900 files are on uh, digitalcreatorschool.com. But if you only want it for Unreal, um, I made it like five bucks cheaper for the Unreal Marketplace. Uh, but for five bucks more, you get the whole uh, whole library. Um, but yeah, that is it for this tutorial. I hope to see you next time on more tutorials and or, you know, things that I make. I have whole courses that teach 
Maya and how to do this kind of stuff um, on longer form courses. So, and I try to, to at least release one course a month essentially now. So uh, stay tuned for that on social media announcements and uh, everywhere else. You can, of course, just sign up on digitalcreatorschool.com to also get those emailed directly to your inbox. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.